Diocletian was the emperor of the East, and Galerius was the eastern Caesar. Diocletian focused on Anatolia, Egypt, Syria, Palestine, and Arabia. He committed several actions to try to improve the military, religious, and economic situations after the crisis of the 3rd century. Primary sources gave a bit of insight, but secondary sources would be the major focus to describe Syria under Diocletian. What was Syria like under Diocletian? Before becoming emperor, Diocletian served under emperors Carus and Nemerian. His colleagues were Maximian and the senior officer, Galerius. In 286 AD, the Sasanian Persians gained from Carus victories. Diocletian chose the eastern provinces due to the war against them. However, in the next year, Sasanian ambassadors possibly came to Syria, and Tertiates became the new Armenian king and as a Roman client. Also, in 290, he fought against the Arab tribes in southeast Syria. In addition, he put down the Syrian revolt and punished the ex-military personnel from Antioch. In 298, the eastern Caesar, Galerius, defeated the Sasanians in two battles, which stabilized the eastern frontier. Meanwhile, Diocletian stayed in Syria to protect Galerius' rear from being outflanked and to prepare for the next year. There were new constructions in Syria due to an economic surplus, and the effects were still there in 320 AD. The same went for economic growth. According to Ammianus Marcellinus, Diocletian improved fortifications, and from M. T. W. Arnheim's perspective, some senators became Syrian governors, also, he conducted a census, and there was some information in Syria in the 280s. According to Eusebius of Caesarea, Diocletian issued the Second Persecution Edict in 393 AD to arrest the clergy. Finally, there were three major laws in Syria. The Legis Seculars 86 focused on the quote-unquote fraternal adoption in the Syro-Roman law book. The Legis Seculars 121 reorganized the tax system and issued land reform. Finally there were Greek inscriptions of Kensitors, land surveyors, to make clear village boundaries. Antioch was one of two main cities of residence in pre-299 AD under Diocletian. In 293-297 AD, the Sacra Moneta, SM, coin showed the evidence of him in Antioch. However, it was possible of him living there as early as 287 AD. Before February 13, 293 AD, there was a conference between Maximian and Diocletian the conferences were to strengthen relations and strategize for the empire. Also, the Antiochene delegation visited Diocletian. In 295 AD, there was another conference, and Antioch was a possible choice, Galerius raised troops from the Balkans and led against the Sasanians. He and Diocletian met in 296 AD to strategize against them. Unfortunately, in 297 AD, Shah Narzas defeated Galerius. And he returned to Antioch to face punishment, walking one mile while wearing imperial robes. In 298, he redeemed himself and successfully defeated the Persians. One of the effects was the Lachmid king switching to the Romans. According to British historian Simon Corcoran, he put a possible date of Diocletian in Antioch, January 9, 299 AD, however, historian Timothy Barnes and Justinian's Code, Diocletian returned to Antioch on February 5, 299 and gained a peace treaty with the Sasanians. During that time, he carried out the law in a mother-son conflict. Her son tried to kill her, but she should not sue him for it due to being alive. In 300 AD, there was a celebration of Galerius' success against Sasanian Persia. Galerius was in a soldier's uniform and Diocletian as a civilian. Galerius blessed the altar with incense, and Diocletian remained as the superior over him. Malalas gave Diocletian's whereabouts in Antioch in July or August of 300 AD. Ecclesiastical historian Eusebius of Caesarea suggested Diocletian possibly being there in the fall of 302. Justinian's Code put two dates on 300, March 25 and June 25. Also, it included July 4, 301, 
on February 24, 303 AD, Diocletian issued an anti-Christian edict to persecute them. For years earlier, the Christians failed to sacrifice the animal for pagan rites. Galerius was there. And Diocletian instructed flogging as punishment. Initially, Galerius was more willing to persecute Christians than Diocletian but evolved his position to allow and condone persecutions. However, the extent was unclear due to Christian apologetic and destroying anti-Christian books under Constantine. Nevertheless, Antioch was a place for Christian and non-intellectual thinkers to come and discourse. He issued another edict, the Price's Edict. The promulgation took place in Alexandria because it and Antioch were trading centers. Traders were the regulators to prohibit soldiers' abuses, but there was no known primary source about it under Diocletian's reign. However, there is a comparison of Julian the Apostate in Diocletian in Antioch. Under Julian's reign, there was more wealth. The Price's Edict focused against greed, not inflation due to food shortages. Diocletian constructed grain stores to combat the issue. There was an increased investment in infrastructure, and the palace in Antioch existed under Diocletian's time. Finally, there were petitions dealing with cohorts and veterans, also, the ex-military personnel gained exemptions. However, later, Diocletian punished them for the Syrian revolt but kept the immunities for the Roman cavalry officers or decurions. On May 1, 295 AD, either Galerius or Diocletian issued the edict on marriage, banning incestuous marriages. Barnes and Simon Corcoran believed Diocletian ordered Galerius to issue it because Diocletian was in Nicomedia on March 18, 295 AD, and Bill Ledbetter wrote, less than six weeks from Nicomedia by road. However, it was possible to get to Damascus in early May. On the other hand, if Galerius did so, it was the only time for Caesar to issue an edict. In the same year, there was a conference, and Damascus was the other choice due to Antioch as the first possibility. There was a road from Damascus to Palmyra and had improved defenses. The milestones were at Fino, Galilean Maximianopolis. And Emesa. Also, according to John Malalas, Damascus was the city to manufacture weapons, it was one of two main cities in pre-299 AD under Diocletian's reign due to having an imperial palace. From 293 to 305 AD, there were two Gregorian documents, focusing on petitions to the emperors and Caesars. According to Corcoran, a possible date was September 22, 294 for procurators. At the time, Galerius was the recent eastern Caesar and focused on putting down the Egyptian revolt. However, Anthony Maurice Honoré, a British lawyer specializing in Roman law, gave other possible dates, 30302 AD under Diocletian. Also, the incest ban in 295 AD was probably a local law due to incest being more common in Persia and the corroborations from Justinian's Code and the Mosaicarum et Romanrarum Legis Calatio. Since Palmyra was no longer once it was before the sack of 273 AD under Emperor Aurelian due to finding out about the treachery from the Palmyrenes. It used to be the focal point of trade in Syria, but Nisibis, in Anatolia, replaced it for commerce and diplomatic relations with the Sasanian Persians. Under Diocletian, Palmyra had defensive walls against the Persians and Arabs. The coins were before 294 AD and construction began in 296 or 297 AD due to Galerius' Persia campaign. It was renamed neo -Cassaria. Simply, it became a military base. However, according to English archaeologist and Egyptologist Sir William Matthew Flinders Petrie and French historian A. Renoc, Palmarine horse archers were in Coptus to protect Roman trading centers. Previously, Legio III Cyrenaica guarded it and later headed to Arabia Patria. Possibly, through inference, there was a fortress in Palmyra in the 290s. Finally, there were defenses on the roads heading Palmyra from Damascus and Susa and milestones, or roadworks, between Palmyra and Bostra. Also, 
There was a 120-mile wall to protect from Syria to Arabia against Persian and Arab incursions, the Strata Diocletiana. Its construction began after Galerius' successful Persian campaign against Sasanian Shah Narzas. It included forts, and Limitanii, frontier troops, served as garrisons. The final point was domestic policy. The evidence came from Justinian's Code, and Simon Corcoran wrote. Establish the free birth of a relative enslaved Palmarini Factionis Domitiation. According to St. Jerome's Chronicle, on May 10, 290 AD, Diocletian was in Antioch. There was a milestone from Emesa to Damascus. It was one of the milestones from 293 to 305 AD. Although Diocletian improved the military, the protracted economic problems persisted. The religious situation with the Christians intensified persecution. Overall, it was a mixed record of success and failures but could not fully stem the effects of the crisis of the 3rd century or the hyperinflation started under Marcus Aurelius and Lucius Verus due to the Antonine Plague and the Marcomannic Wars.